And I will start sharing. Okay, wait, you probably see a lot of black boxes around. As is usually my system. Okay, so welcome to my talk about small talk. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this language that uh, shaped the kind of programmer that I am and that shaped my career and that actually uh, made me sort of regain my love uh, for programming. I've said that uh, several times. Uh, I always wanted to be a programmer right until I joined, uh, until I enrolled in university and then uh, I thought that we would learn a lot of languages and a lot of different programming paradigms and we actually learned one single language and it was not a good one. Uh, but then I was lucky enough that uh, Professor Jordi uh, Delgado offered a small talk course and I joined it and that completely changed my views about computing and programming. So let me show you a bunch of these things that uh, made me, uh, that, that really made me regain my love for programming. So small talk uh, is not just a language and you'll be familiar with this term, a language and an environment because Snap is exactly that. It's a language and an environment. Uh, someone has their microphone uh, on. I can hear background noise, okay. Uh, so what you're seeing here in front of, uh, in, in my screen is actually the Smalltalk language and the Smalltalk environment. It's not a funky um, operating system, although I do use a funky operating system behind that. And, uh, the nice thing about this language, about this environment, is that it's written in itself. And that means that you can basically modify it while it's running. Uh, let me show you what this means. For example, I could take this uh, text box here and say, I like it better in this brownish color. Uh, actually, let me make it some other color. And let me do that by actually inspecting this object this text object and saying, okay, now your color should be this one. And you see that the change is reflected immediately. And of course you can destroy substantial parts. Uh, you can change substantial parts of the system and you can destroy the system. You can modify things like changing what uh, equals means or what plus means. Uh, you can change things like, mm, well, the meaning of everything, right? Uh, but you can change things that may be useful for you. You, you may be uh, a bit impatient and you may want your scroll bars to be faster than they are. Can you see that they are, uh, well, they work like regular scroll bars. And I see that there's this method that says scroll down and it basically sets the value of a scroll uh, bar to something. I don't really care what it is. And I'm going to just multiply that by, uh, let's say 1.1. And immediately after, sa after saving this, my scroll bars are way faster when I scroll down. Check this out. This was just one scroll. It's super fast. I can make it faster and make it unusable. Now it's ridic ridiculously fast. Uh, let me revert that change. So basically, the idea is that the system uh, is customizable and is programmable. And the whole system is serialized into a file. This is an image-based system, sort of like the XML uh, project in Snap that when you open it, uh, it keeps some of the state, it keeps the pen color, it keeps uh, uh, the currently selected sprite in version seven, actually. It keeps a lot of state, right? So Smalltalk keeps all the state. Let me show you how true that is. I'm just going to save and quit. And I'm going to open Smalltalk again. And here I am, exactly where I left. So this is super useful when you're working on Smalltalk, because uh, tomorrow you may not remember where you were, and in a regular non-programmable system, you'll have to reopen your uh, ID and you'll have to go back to your notes and whatever. In Smalltalk, you open Smalltalk and you're back exactly where you were. Okay, and how does this thing work? We've talked a lot about the environment, but what, what does the language look like? Well, in Smalltalk, objects is all there is. Everything is an object in Smalltalk. And everything means everything. Smalltalk is a, a pretty consistent language. Uh, so when we say that everything is an object, we pretty much mean it. 
Everything includes things like numbers, scroll bars, as, you, as you've seen, uh, this text box here, bizarre things like the particular state of execution of a piece of code, things like, I don't know, like this icon here that I can take and move around, and it still works, because why not? Uh, okay, what else there is? Well, there are messages, and that's how objects talk, talk to each other. Uh, and that's inspired in the way, and I'm sorry if Yatka is here, because I'm going to butcher her uh, knowledge area, which is biology. Uh, it's similar to how cells in nature communicate. And the whole idea of small talk is very much inspired in the idea of, of cells and of simple um, entities that do very little things and communicate with each other, and that gives birth to very complex systems but the individual parts of the system are really simple. Uh, so what you do in Smalltalk to trigger behavior is you send a message to an object and that receiving object, is, it's up to them to decide what to do with that message, right? And of course, uh, remember I said that it's a consistent language and that everything there is, is objects. Messages are of course also objects and you can send messages to messages. It's that insane. State, objects have state. That means that they can keep data, they can remember stuff. Uh, exactly, again, sorry, Adga, just like cells in nature, and I think I'm going to say something that's not true, but, uh, but well, I, I, I imagine that's, that's how cells work. So the way to modify the state of an object is by sending them a message uh, and, asking them to modify that state, right? You don't modify the state of an object from the outside like you do in, in many, many other languages by changing a property directly. What you do is ask the, the object to please change that state. And it's up to the object to decide what they do with your message. And then there's classes. And every object has a class. Every object is an instance of a class. And again, uh, this is inspired in nature and inspired in uh, philosophy as well in in Kant's classes and and older uh, ideas of class and you you can think of a class as uh, a blueprint that's something that you can use to create new objects of that class right so in a way uh, it's sort of like the dna of these objects and of course classes are objects and in fact, the only way in Smalltalk to create a new instance of a class is to send that class a message asking it to make a new object, right? Okay, this is all good, but up to here, I guess it's not very impressive. Uh, in Smalltalk, you only get the idea of how great the language and the environment is when you're working on it, when you're working in Smalltalk. And especially, and this is the problem with this talk, uh, you get that sense when you're working on a big project, on a huge project actually, uh, on a project that you have to debug that other people are working on. Uh, we obviously can't do that today, but I'm going to try to go together through a short coding session to give you a hint of the kinds of tools that Smalltalk provides. So I have this problem here, and this is actually reminiscent of the days where I used to be a, a, a small talk programmer professionally, we would start pretty much every week with one problem from the Project Euler website. It's a website that has uh, a lot of mathematical problems and we would pick one and try to uh, solve it in small talk. So let's see what this uh, problem says. It says a polyendromic number reads the same both ways. Okay, let's, let's start playing with that. And to play with that, we're going to open a playground in traditional small talks, this was called the workspace. In Faro, I guess, even though Faro is designed for work more than play, they called it playground. And other small, small talks that were designed for play, they called it workspace. So, okay, a palindromic number reads the same both ways. Let's see. For example, 131 should be a palindromic number. Uh, let's ask this. Uh, this object, the object 131, whether it's a palindrome. And I'm going to print the result. And Smalltalk tells me, I really don't understand what you're telling me. I don't know what is palindrome means. This is not an error. This is just uh, this object receiving this message and saying, 
I don't understand the message. So please tell me what you. It's know. a typo, Bernard. You forgot the R. Oh, I forgot the R, but it's not a it's not a typo actually. That, that was intended. <laughs> so it is a typo, but it still won't understand it if I write it in the proper way because it it really doesn't know what is palindrome means, and it's just telling me I don't know what that means. What do you want to do? Uh, I don't get an error. I don't get. I just get uh, a reply, a response from that object saying I don't know what that is. And I have this great tool here, which is where most programs in Smalltalk are created. It's the debugger. In Smalltalk, you basically live inside the debugger. And one of the things that it tells me is I can create uh, a method that responds to that, to that message. Okay, so I'm going to create it. And it asks, asks me in which class I want to define it. Uh, 131 is an instance of a small integer but also of an integer, a number, a magnitude, an object, or a proto-object. So where, do, where does this palindrome um, make sense? Well, it makes sense in integer, for example. Numbers, there are numbers that, uh, I don't know, have uh, different notations, and palindromity is hard to define there, so I'll, I'll stick with integers. And it asks me to give it a protocol. A protocol is like a category for in snap right so here we have uh, protocols and i'll call it i don't know uh properties or numeric properties and uh now the debugger continued the execution right after i typed that and it says is palindrome should be implemented so let's do it a number is a palindrome if itself right if this number self uh, as a string equals self as a string reversed. And let me show you what this thing here means. Uh, I'm talking all the time about objects and messages, but we're not seeing them here. Well, self is an object. It's the 131 object. A string is a message that we're sending to self, to this object. It's converting 131 into text equals is a message that we're sending to this of the object resulting from this uh execution here so 131 as a string the 131 text and then as a parameter to this message i'm sending this other object here and this other object is self as a string so the same thing here uh, that receives the message reversed and so it's going the other way around okay we can proceed and now it doesn't complain anymore it now understands what this palindrome is and it's saying yes it is a palindrome okay now we know what a palindromic number i mean let's try with something different is palindrome is this a palindrome no it's not okay perfect it says the largest palindrome made from the product of two digit numbers is 9009 and that equals 91 multiplied by 99 and it's asking us to find the largest palindrome made from the product of three digit numbers. Okay, let's play a little bit with that. Uh, let's see, we know that three digit numbers go from 100 to 999. This is just a range, just like in, in Snap, we have uh, numbers from. Here we have a number sending it a message to with the object 999 as a parameter. And with that, we're going to we're going to get from these numbers each number from each one of these numbers we're going to multiply it by again the range from 100 to 999 and let's see what that gives us let's inspect this uh, that's a way to look at objects and we see we're getting a lot of arrays, a lot of uh, table uh, of lists. This is a big list of lists, and I really don't want that. I want just one list of lists. So I'm basically going to just flatten this. So I send a flattened uh, message to self, which happens to be this list of lists. Now I have just this list, and now I just want to select the palindromes. So self, I want to select from all this list only the numbers that are palindromes. And I'll inspect that. 
and here I have them. And from all these numbers, I just want the max, right? Is that what they're asking us? The largest number, yeah. So give me the maximum one, and that's 906609. And if we go back to the Project Euler uh, website, we see that the answer is right. So uh, let me go back here and stop sharing. I know this was quick. I wish I had two hours to show you the wonders of uh, small talk. Unfortunately, I don't. And uh, really, uh, oh, someone is asking if reverse is a primitive functioning small talk. No, not at all. Uh, actually, OK, so let me let me share again. And let me show you one tool that's crazy, which is the finder. We have a finder here. Sorry. Oh, it's open, sorry. That we can find by example. So say you didn't know how to reverse something. You could say, I have one, two, three, and I want to get three, two, one. What do you have that can do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Too many languages. One, two, three, and I want three, two, one. What do you have that gives that? And there you go. You have reverse, reversed, and sometimes you have shuffle. Uh, if I didn't know that I had flattened, oh, sorry, and now that we have reversed, we can actually look for the implementers. of reversed, reversed. OK, apparently not here. First, who implements this? There you go. So it's actually not a primitive. It's implemented in Smalltalk itself. Pretty much the whole system is implemented in itself. I've been wondering ever since I've seen small talk, it seems fantastic if you're an individual because you could change the world, you, it, it saves the images, it does all that. But it, it, it's, I was worried that it makes it harder to collaborate because it's hard to give somebody a piece of your system if somebody else is working on it and you, you don't know how they've changed it. So is there some truth that it's fantastic for a single programmer and not so good for collaborating? Where is it? I've, I've worked on a big-ish system with uh, about four other programmers, and it, it worked OK. You have, uh, nowadays, you have GitHub. You have, we, we used to have this uh, Metacello repository where you just push changes and download them. I mean, it's the same as in other languages, right? You're, you push your code, and then you well, sync it with your local copy. You save the whole image, and also you're able to make changes to any Part of the system it seems yeah so your image is yours and if i open your image i make it lost but code is not shared that way i, I don't give you my image usually mm. okay what i give you is a link to the repository from way, from which you're going to collaborate with me and as john is saying uh i'm making him really miss it john was one of the developers of the squeak language from which this uh implementation of small talk called faro that i showed you uh derived and uh, he says, I'm making him really miss it. I have to say, while preparing this talk, uh, I almost cry missing small talk and all the tools that it offers. And I think I'm a little bit over time, so thank you for your attention.